Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us this evening. Welcome to the Illinois Association for College Admissions Counseling Virtual College Fair. Thank you for joining us. Uh, a few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time throughout this session. Your camera and microphone are turned off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions happening this evening, so please be sure to sign up for additional sessions after this. This presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at strivescan.com slash Illinois. And now I would like to turn it over to our first presenter of the evening, and that is Carleton College. Thank you very much. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen, screen with you all. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Wendy Lotto. I'm one of the assistant dean of admissions at Carleton College. Carleton is a small private liberal arts college located in Northfield, Minnesota. Um, we are so excited to be here to share with you a little bit about who we are as an institution. And as you are in this journey, hopefully Carleton can be one of those schools on your list. You are amongst a lot of really great institutions today. And so hopefully we can we can resonate with you um, through this process. So a quick overview about Carleton. Um, we, like I said, are, we are located in Northfield, Minnesota. So if you are familiar with the Twin Cities, Minneapolis, St. Paul, we're about 45 minutes south of the Twin Cities. Our campus, we have roughly about 2,000 students on our campus coming from all over the world as well as the country. I like to break it down a little bit for everyone to understand geographically where our students are coming from. It's roughly 40% of our students are coming from the Midwestern states, 20% from the East Coast, 20% from the West Coast, roughly about 11% from the Southern states. And in addition to the US, it's about 11% of our students are international on a given year. So we are a smaller academic, personal vibe for students. So if you're looking for a smaller school that has that access to professors, to your peers, et cetera, this is the kind of school that um, a lot of students might, might consider. We are a liberal arts institution, so our curriculum is robust and it is well-rounded. So students who come to Carleton have over 30 majors that they can choose from. Majority of our students are undecided. It's not until you're second year on campus that you get to declare your major. So you have lots of time to explore within the curriculum. A um, little bit more about our location. What's really nice about us being close to the Twin Cities is that students don't necessarily feel isolated in the town of Northfield. With the access to the Twin Cities, Minneapolis, St. Paul, students think about internships, job opportunities, graduate programs, the list goes on. So it's a great way for students to be able to step outside of Northfield to connect. We also have a lot of people in, involved with Northfield as well. So if you wanted to do some volunteer work with our director, direct um, community, you have that opportunity to. So our location is, is pretty great, I must say. I want to highlight our academics at Carleton. As I mentioned, we are a liberal arts institution. So at Carleton, what, what distinguishes us amongst liberal arts is that we run on a trimester schedule. But then within our trimester schedule, our curriculum really allows for students to engage in this multifaceted aspect of the liberal arts. Liberal arts. One of the things that I like to highlight specifically is that students get to complete a comps project in their senior year. So if that's something of interest to you in terms of being able to do a project in your senior year that really centers within your major, you get that opportunity. It's a great way to connect with um, employers, future employers, as well as graduate opportunities that you might be seeking. And so a lot of students really look forward to their comps project as well. Lots of mentorship that happens through your academic experience at Carleton. I think it's a pretty fun moment for students. I also want to highlight that every year students get six weeks off after after their fall term, you have a fall term, a winter term, and a spring term. In your terms, you're only taking three classes during that time. But after your fall term, you get six weeks off. And so during that time, a lot of students might stay on campus, they might go home, but a lot of students are engaging in what we call externships. So externships are an important opportunity for you to do some job shadowing. Sometimes you might not know exactly what you want to do, so maybe a job shadow, somebody who graduated from Carleton and is in a career or in a field that you're interested in. So this is an opportunity for you to, to seek that out. Um, 
Other things about Carleton is that we have been ranked number one for undergraduate teaching for a very long time. So students really appreciate the connections that they can have with professors, as well as interacting with research on our campus. I also want to talk about campus culture. Here are a couple of words that we use to describe Carl's at large, but this is not exclusive to just these words and these terms and these descriptors. So a lot of students who might resonate with some of these terms really want to be on a campus campus in which students are collaborative. They are engaged in adventurous opportunities, whether it is on campus, through the curriculum, you get your fill. So Carleton is a really great place to, to allow for a lot of students to come and participate in all of our activities. Campus life is a big thing because we are a small private liberal arts college. Lots of students are always curious of what do you do on campus? There's over 200 student organizations. If you're interested in connecting with the community, like I mentioned earlier, we have our trip CE, which are our Center for Civic and Community Engagement. You can also take courses that allow for you to serve the community in different ways. So it's a pretty fun thing. We have tons of traditions as well. So if you are curious of learning about our traditions, you're more than welcome to ask us in the chat. Last thing I want to mention about Carleton is that we are a school that meets 100% of demonstrated need. So if you are curious about the ways that we support students financially over the course of their four years, feel free to check us out um, and we're happy to answer any of those questions. Here's another way for you to connect with us. Just reach out to us through, on our website and we're happy to, to give you more information about Carleton. Thank you and I believe Rockhurst is next and so we'll, we'll pass it over to them. Thank you so much. And you are correct. Next up, we have Rockhurst University. Hello, everyone. My name is BB Solomon, and I am one of the Rockhurst representatives um, joining you tonight. So here I go sharing my screen. All right, so first and foremost, Rockhurst is a also a liberal arts institution located in Kansas City, Missouri. Um, so we're right in the heart of kind of the kind of the heart of the Midwest, but uh, we are on the northern side of Missouri, so it does get cold. Um, but we are um, located in the heart of Kansas City, so we're about uh, two blocks away from downtown KC, um, and then all the Kansas City hotspots are right around us. We are a Jesuit Catholic institution, and essentially what that means is that you would be a part of a values-based organization. Uh, we have core values that we take pride in. They are six core values, um, and it's just a way for us to, to, to hold ourselves accountable and build a foundation because college is, a, is an opportunity for you to grow and redefine yourself. So these core values are finding God or good in all things, cure a personalis, and that means care for the whole person. And when we say care for the whole person, we we help you find ways to care for yourself, your heart, your soul, and mind. Um, Majus, which means more, more in quality rather than quantity in everything that you do, reflection and discernment, contemplation and action, and wisdom. And while we are a Catholic institution, everything that we do here, and that's one of our paramount objectives, is that everything is an invitation, not an expectation. Therefore, you're not required to attend Mass. You're not required to be Catholic. Our campus ministry department um, is an avenue for all of our students, Catholic and non-Catholic, and they serve you in the best way that they can to help you uh, find your spiritual goals. Service is a huge part of our identity, and again, it's one of the paramount objectives that we have here. It's an invitation, not an expectation, so you're not required to complete service hours in order to graduate. However, our students do partake in over 20,000 hours every year worth of community service, and that's um, domestic and international. And we have over 45 local projects that our students do partake in, and we also offer the Service Immersion Trip Program. This is a super popular and great program for our students. It's a week-long trip. A majority of them are either out of state or within um, within Latin and Central America, and you go for a full week to do service with a specific organization that we're partnering up with that year. We don't believe that you're going to change the world in a week. Therefore, it's called a service trip, not a mission trip. 
these are some of the locations that we have sent our students on in this in the recent years. Um, so the Dominican Republic, Guatemala, El Paso, Texas, Houston, Jamaica, New York City, Nicaragua, Philadelphia, Los Angeles, and the list goes on. Your first two years, you are required to live on campus and we have three residence halls. Um, two of them are for first years and the other one is for upperclassmen. And then we also have on-campus housing. We have the townhouse villages, the Rock Row townhouses and the Kateri community living space. Your last two years at Rockhurst, you are free to live off campus if you wish to do so, but you can continue to live on campus if that's also something you would like to do. The really unique thing about the Kateri living space is that this is a community oriented home. It's two floors. The first floor is the St. Ignatius floor, which means that you get to live with individuals who practice a certain faith. So you live within that faith based environment. Um, and again, you do not have to be Catholic to live on that floor. And then the second floor is the eco spirituality. So you live within um, the means that help you understand what it's like to live economic or um, uh, environmentally friendly, and that's for the purpose of um, of um, of living living in an environmentally friendly way. These are some of the organizations that we, or they're not actually the organizations, but these are the categories of organizations that we have on campus. So we have athletic recreationals, so that would be your intramural. So if you decide not to play a sport, but you do enjoy playing sports, you can do it in a recreational way. Um, campus programming, so we have several organizations within that category. And essentially what they do is they are responsible for any campus events that do take place on, on um, campus sororities and fraternities, honor societies, international, cultural, multicultural, uh, political, and special interest groups. So for example, we have a group called um, uh, LEAP, and LEAP stands for Leaders, um, I cannot remember, but it's an environment, it's, it's a group that does, um, does effort, they, they make efforts for, um, for the environment and climate and climate change. So this is where we are located in the city. So if you see the little blue R where um, the first circle is that says eight minutes. Um, like I said, we're right in the center of the city and these are all the Kansas City hotspots. Um, these are durations within a walking distance. So things are pretty close around here as well. Um, the Nelson Atkins Museum is a um, um, a contemporary art museum. I ran out of time, so I am going to put up here my um, contact information. So if you guys would like to jot this down, I would love to connect with you in any way that I can. Thank you. Thank you so much. Next up, we have Missouri Western State University. How's it going, guys? My name is Blake Bachmiller, and I'm a counselor here at Missouri Western State University. Uh, so a little bit about us. So we're located in uh, St. Joseph, Missouri, about 45 minutes north of Kansas City. Uh, we have about 4,000 students. Um, average classroom size is 17 to 20 for us. Um, we have about 70 plus majors to choose from. Uh, depends on what you're interested in studying. Um, and about 93% of incoming freshmen receive some type of financial aid, which is pretty awesome. Some things that separate us from everybody else. So we are a teaching first institution. So our professors are also your advisors, so we don't have separate professors and separate advisors. You get to build that relationship with your professors, which is pretty awesome. Um, we also started what we call the Center for Service, which is we give students the opportunity to earn free college credit. And so if you do 40 hours of community service, you get one college credit for free. If you do 80, you get two. If you do 120, you get three. It's kind of like a $1,500 scholarship. You do the community service, you do it. You don't have to pay for the class. It's automatically free. I will tell you, um, we did start something new this year called Gold Fridays. So we are only in the classroom Monday through Thursday. Uh, we do not have classes on Fridays whatsoever. Uh, so Fridays are completely open for our students to do whatever they want to do. So if they want to do community service, if they want to do applied learning, if they want to have open office hours with professors, or if they just want to have a free day, they can do that as well. Uh, but Fridays are designated to our students to do whatever they want to do. Um, 
we're an applied learning institution, so we believe in hands-on experience. Uh, so internships, research, study abroad, service learning, leadership opportunities, you might experience all five of those. You might experience a couple of them, but before you walk across the stage at Missouri Western, you will have some type of an applied learning opportunity in your major. And that's what employers look for, something that's gonna help separate you from everybody else. Campus life, I'll tell you that there's many things to do to get involved with campus life. Um, we have 90 plus student organizations. They range from Greek life, intramurals, honors, religious, trap club, bowling club, you name it, we have it. Um, if we don't have something you're interested in, uh, four friends and a faculty member, you can create your own group here on campus. Uh, these things look great on resumes. It shows that you're involved on campus. So we always tell students, get involved. Um, we are a division two school uh, that competes in the MIT. A conference is probably the toughest conference in Division Two, which is awesome. Um, but our athletic department does something great called the Griffin, the Max Experience. So you and four members of your family get into all of them games for free. Um, you as a student get something to eat and drink at halftime for free, and then you as a student get to go to one away football game and basketball game for free, uh, which is pretty awesome as well. Um, there's many things to do on campus. So we have recreation facilities, nature trails, fishing ponds. Uh, of course, Kansas City Chiefs come here for training camp. Uh, we have a planetarium on campus. We have an on-campus health center. So if you're not feeling good, can't make it to class, we have a nurse on site that will check you out. Uh, no copay or anything like that. Uh, we also have the Center for Academic Support. So if you ever need tutoring, English and math is always on site available for help to give out free flashcards and things like that. Um, key thing with St. Joe, I mean, we have about 77,000 people. Uh, like I said, we're only 45 minutes away from Kansas City. Um, so just a short drive. Um, there's many eating places, shopping places. I always tell students that it's not too big, it's not too small, just the right size if you're looking to be involved, uh, opportunities inside your major, part-time job opportunities, things like that. So it's not, it has many opportunities for you to get involved in things like that. Um, but I'm gonna be honest, um, six residential halls to choose from, um, apartment suite style living, uh, first time freshmen are required to live that first year on campus, uh, 24 hour security, free Wi-Fi, free cable. Uh, typically freshmen, they live in Scanlon Hall, which has the Jack and Jill bathroom, uh, but we do have apartment style setups for our students if they wanna stay in those as well. Uh, we have Chick-fil-A, Subway, Starbucks, tons of food options on campus. Um, if we don't have something you're interested in for food wise, City of St. Joe has tons of options to choose from as well. Um, but this was what everybody wants to know. How much does it cost? So what's great for everybody here is that you guys all qualify for Griffin rate, uh, which is in-state tuition. So any state that touches Missouri, um, all the students in that state receive in-state tuition. So you don't have to have a certain ACT or a test score or a GPA to get that. You automatically get that. Uh, we're one of the most affordable in the state of Missouri for total cost. Uh, so it's around 16392 for the entire year. Uh, that's 30 credit hours. 15 in the fall, 15 in the spring, meal plan, housing, everything's included. Um, we do a scholarship system for all of our freshmen um, called the Griffin Guarantee Scholarship. And what this is, is it's strictly based off the GPA. Uh, we don't look at ACT score. ACT is not required for us because we're test optional. Um, but we do um, do this Griffin Guarantee Scholarship, like I said, based off of your GPA. And then every 30 hours you complete with us, um, you will get more money added on top of your scholarship. Uh, to give me an idea, this is kind of what it looks like. It ranges from a 2.5 GPA all the way up to a 4.0 GPA. Um, so year one, that's what you would get. Year two, you add $1,000 on top of that. Year three, you get a $500 increase on top of that. Year four, you get another $500 increase on top of that as well. Um, again, it's stackable with any other scholarships that you might get from us or any outside scholarships um, and things like that. Now, if you do take the ACT, uh, we do super score the ACT. So take the test as many times as possible. Um, but if you do take the ACT, every point on the ACT, uh, a 20 and above, will give you an extra $100 on your starting amount for your scholarship. So um, definitely take the ACT just because you don't know how much more money uh, that you will get and things like that. Um, I have one final thing. Um, it's a free application to apply to Missouri Western. Don't feel like you have to pay for an application fee or anything like that. Uh, my recommendation is just come to campus and uh, see everything that we have to offer. Thank you, Blake. Um, next up, we have the University of Northern Iowa. Okay, 
Hey everyone, my name is Jesus Lizarraga Estrada and I work at the University of Northern Iowa. So we are located in Cedar Falls, Iowa. Our total enrollment is about 10,500. So as you're looking into bigger schools, right, you're looking at anywhere between, you know, 20, 30, 40,000 plus students. If you're looking at any smaller school, private school, you're looking at anywhere between 1,000 to 3,000. So we're right down in the middle. We are one of the three public schools in the state. What you'll find at UNI is we have over 90 programs. 25 pre-professional programs. So these are programs that require more than a bachelor's degree, right? So getting you admitted to a graduate program, uh, med school, law school, and so forth. All of you will get an academic advisor from us, but those who are in the pre-professional program will also get a supplemental advisor. And that person will ensure that you have the classes that you meet in order to uh, be admissible to those graduate professional programs, but also the hands-on experience that you need in order to be marketable as well. Our average size class is 29, so we keep our classes very small. 99% of our classes are taught by faculty, so you're getting information straight from the source, not teacher assistance, grad assistance. You're getting information from them. These are people that become your mentors, um, advisors, and they can also recommend you um, to their colleagues, right, that they have in the field of your interest for internships or even full-time jobs. The unique thing about UNI is that we get you hands-on experience right away as a freshman, whether that be through an internship, um, co-op. The reason that we do that is you don't know if you like something until you actually do it. So if you realize in that first semester or second semester of your freshman year that your hands-on experience is not what you expected it to be, we can still have time to change your mind in terms of academic program and still keep you on track. So that is, there's a lot of intentionality on that. But if you do like that hands-on experience that you got, it only adds to your resume, so it also makes you more marketable as well. 93% of our students get experience directly related to their program, to their future careers, which then translates to our overall um, end result, which is 95% of our students are either employed or are in their graduate program of their choice. And basically, essentially, that's behind that intentionality of getting you hands-on experience whether that was through an internship, co-op, undergraduate research, or um, study abroad experience. We do offer a four-year plan of study for every academic program on campus. So if you go to this link, majors.uni.edu, you can look up your major and see what you will be taking at UNI as a freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior. And a lot of this will serve as a template as maybe you're bringing in a lot of college credit courses. We can identify how those apply. But this can kind of give you an idea of what classes you'll be taking on our campus, but also what kind of careers and hands-on experience you'll get as an undergraduate student on, at UNI. What else you'll find? A lot of campus involvement, a lot of campus experience. We have over 260 clubs on campus to get involved in, anything within your major to service base. Um, we have 17 Division I athletic teams. All of our athletic events at UNI are free for um, students, UNI students. You simply show your ID, you're good to go. We also bring national Broadway events to campus. Um, performances from the Blue Man Group, Stop, West Side Story, Shrek the Musical. For those, you get a free ticket per semester and then you get discounted tickets um, as well. So there's a lot of um, student involvement and a lot of student experiences on campus. I would say as you're kind of um, looking at different schools, your journey, I would say your next steps would be to visit the schools. For us, we have visit options, whether that be on campus or virtual. So that's the link and I can provide the link in the chat too. Uh, but come and check us out, see if you and I is the right fit for you. Uh, we have a presentation, we'll give you a campus tour, check out the residence halls, and we'll do something similar on the virtual format if you're not comfortable coming to campus. Funding opportunities, I'll kind of go through these really quick. For out-of-state students, you're looking at $19,480 per year. As an out-of-state student, your room and your unlimited meal plan is a total of $91,60 for the full year for a total of $28,640 for the full academic year. And this includes everything. All tutoring is already included. Printing is included. Our workout facility is included. So the only cost not included here would be your books and then your parking pass, which is roughly around sixty dollars for the full year. In terms of scholarships, all Illinois students upon admission to UNI get a $20,000 scholarship. That's $5,000 per year for four years um, upon admission. We are test optional for fall 22 as well. So we do not require ACT or SAT. If you do provide test scores, we have additional scholarships as those are listed there that would be on top of the 20,000.
We also award scholarships with no test scores. So if you have um, just a GPA, we'll look at that. And that will be in addition, these scholarships to the $20,000 scholarship. We also have the United Scholarship um, based on GPA only. And that is specifically for students of color, tr um, trio students or AVID participants. This is stackable with the 20 and also the other ones that I just indicated. And then we also have the Legacy Scholarship. This is for um, students who had a parent, grandparent, or a sibling who graduated from UNI or who's currently attending UNI. In addition to these merit-based scholarships, automatic scholarships, we also have one scholarship app that applies to all scholarships at UNI. And you'll have access to that the moment that you apply to us. With that being said, if you have any additional questions, that is our email, but I will put my information in the chat. Thank you. Thank you so much. Next up, we have Truman State University. Hi there, my name is Katherine Dressman. I am an admission counselor here at Truman State University. I look over the region of Northern Illinois and I have here with me Joe Recupero and he looks over Southern Illinois. And let's tell you a little bit about Truman here. So, doo -doo -doo. here is Truman. One of the most important parts of Truman is that we are located in Kirksville, Missouri, which is in Northeast Missouri. We actually used to be called Northeast Missouri uh, University, uh, but we've since changed that name. We are a mid-size university. I'd like to say this is the Goldilocks size, not too big, not too small, it's just right. We have around 4,500 students on any given year total. Typically we have a little bit more because of our international students, but unfortunately some of them weren't able to come this year. So we're really hoping for next year that they're able to come back. Um, but we find that this is a great size for not only creating the communities that you'd like to join on campus, but also getting to know your professors. I think it allows for that easy access in the classroom to getting to know your professors and vice versa, them getting to know you. And I think that's a hallmark of being here at Truman. So this is our campus. We are, our mascot is the bulldog. His name is Spike. He's got a birthday coming up. So we're excited for him. Um, we have a lot of different sites to see on campus. So we'll talk a little bit about visiting at the end, but I'll move into some of our fun facts. So 97% of our students receive financial aid through scholarships. So when we go over the tuition and things, those are the sticker prices, uh, and then you'll be looking at scholarships then too. Over 50% of our students graduate with no student loan debt, and I think that's thanks to our scholarship deals that we have. 71% of our students uh, graduate within five years. We provide a five-year graduation rate because a lot of our students go into our master's and graduate programs. So that is the highest in the state of Missouri as well. 87% of our students are employed or in grad school after graduation. So we love to see those outcomes. And then the last is that we are the number one public school. I don't know even why I had to look at that. We're the number one public school in the, mid in the Midwest for the past 24 years. Uh, and this is a non-flagship public school in the Midwest for the past 24 years running. Uh, and you can find that report on US News and World Report. We have um, a liberal arts and sciences curriculum and within our university we've got around 49 major programs 20 or 62 minors uh, and a couple different uh, graduate programs and pre-professional programs some of the most popular ones here at the university are business we have a lot of biology students here um, we've got a host of education students as well uh, within the business program we are AASCB accredited and we have one of the top accounting programs in the region we just recently had students score within the top 4% of passing the accounting exam for the first time, the CPE exam. So let's go Bulldogs. Um, and then for biology, typically people choose that for pre-med because a lot of our students will go on to uh, pursue pre-med and pre-health services degrees, uh, pre-health sciences degrees after that. We are, as I said, a liberal arts and sciences university. And so the goal of this is to make sure you graduate well-rounded with a lot of different classes. You're able to pick up a lot of these soft skills in intercultural communication skills, flexible thinking skills and adaptable skills. And the goal of that is to make sure that when you go into graduate school or your first job that you're able to acclimate to that experience so that you're, you're hitting the ground on your best foot, right? And so that's done uh, with 
hands-on opportunities like internships and research projects, including a capstone project. I heard Carlton has a similar thing too. Liberal arts and sciences schools are awesome. Um, we do uh, what's called a capstone project. And so that can manifest into a research project or an internship. One of the coolest ones I've heard is that we had a student go up to New York and work on the opening of Disney Plus, or I should say like the, the first steps of like opening up that application. So it was pretty cool for that student. For our student life, uh, you're not just gonna be in classes, right? You're gonna be outside of class too. We have 230 student organizations. We've got academic and honors associations, so really good for study buddies. We've got religious and cultural organizations, special interest groups. My favorite one is plants exclamation point that is a special interest group and that one stands for plant lovers also need to socialize and i think if we have that group we've got a group for everybody and we are also a division two sports school and i thought i'd call out northwest missouri state uh we're going to be heading into the elite eight with our men's basketball team soon so congratulations to the both of us and may the best person win um, or the best team win no i in team and we have uh, 16 different ones. So we've got swimming and women's tennis and things like that. Look out. So the topic of the hour, uh, I'll go over some costs in our application too. So we'll start with applications since that one's on the left. It is a free application. And so we've got the host of different uh, application parts right there. This year we were um, test optional, but we're not quite sure about next year. So stay tuned. And so you can do that on apply.truman.edu or you can use the Common App. For our out-of-state friends here, our total cost, sticker cost is 25,000. But again, that's just the sticker price. We've got a lot of automatic and competitive scholarships for you once you apply. And if you have any questions, that is our information. I also put our TikTok and Instagram. So feel free to follow, but up next is St. Louis University. Thank you so much. And St. Louis University is gonna finish us out for the evening, so thank you. Perfect, thank you. My name is Stephanie Sapansky and I'm going to um, share my screen. Um, sorry, hopefully you can see my presentation. I'm Stephanie Sapansky, I'm an admission counselor here at St. Louis University. I'd also like to introduce my colleague, Jennifer Tanner. Jennifer is also here with us and oh, we can't hear Jennifer, but you can see her picture for some reason. Of course, it's Zoom. It happens at least once a day on to me on Zoom. But Jennifer here is to answer all of your questions. I work with students in the Chicago area. So does Jennifer. She also also works with students in the Kansas City, Missouri area, as well as the state of Kansas. So welcome this evening. So St. Louis University is a medium sized Catholic Jesuit school. We are located both in St. Louis, Missouri, as well as in Madrid, Spain. We have just over 8,000 undergraduate students, and we're ranked as a top 50 Catholic Jesuit school. We are actually the second oldest Jesuit school. We were founded in 1818. Um, we were founded in 1818, and um, we were the first university west of the Mississippi. So we are home to a lot of firsts here at St. Louis University. We. Um, do have, we are located in the city of St. Louis, but we always like to say that we do have that traditional college feel. So when you're on campus, you actually kind of have no idea that you're in the city of St. Louis. So you do kind of get the best of both worlds. Now, as we mentioned, one of my colleagues mentioned that they are also a Jesuit school. Um, the Jesuits are the largest order of Catholic priests, right? So um, what it means to be a Jesuit school is educating that whole person, mind, body, and spirit, being a person for others and academic excellence. And so, there are 27 Jesuit schools within the United States and we all live out our mission just a little bit different, right? And so here at St. Louis University, we really live out our Jesuit mission through being that men and women for and with others. So last year we contributed over 1.98 million hours of community service and we're ranked number two in the country for community service and engagement. One of the things that I do think is really important about Jesuit education is that we are considered a home to all faiths. So all Jesuit schools are, you don't have to be Catholic to come here, we want you to continue on and that whatever faith tradition that is for you. 
at St. Louis University, we have 11 different colleges and nearly 90 different undergraduate majors for you to choose from. All of them are direct entry. Um, some of our popular majors, that's always a big question, is our six-year doctorate of physical therapy, biology, aerospace engineering, business, communication, nursing, flight science. We're actually the only Jesuit school with a flight science program. Um, psychology and all of those are some of our more popular majors. Now, there are three programs that we always consider direct entry only, meaning if you are planning to come to St. Louis University for this major, you do have to apply as an incoming first year student. You do have to apply by December 1st of your senior year. That is our direct entry nursing program, our six year doctorate of physical therapy, as well as our five-year Master's of Occupational Therapy. So those are our direct entry only programs. You can always transfer out, you just can't transfer into those programs. Now, most of our majors do have hands-on learning experience. So clinicals, research, all of those opportunities. We are one of five locations with a supersonic wind tunnel. So if you are one of our students in our aerospace engineering program, um, you have access to that starting freshman year. Um, in addition, for School of Business, School of Nursing, all of our majors do have those opportunities opportunities. We are actually one of only nine Catholic schools that have the Division I Doctoral Extensive High Research Activity designation by Carnegie Mellon. And so what that means for you is that our faculty are required to do research and you have the opportunity to do research with them. Of course, we don't require you to do research, but if that's something that interests you, you absolutely can do that. One of the things that we've been doing research on this year um, is we were part of the COVID uh, vaccine research. So our students were part of that, um, from our public health students to our nursing students, all participating in those different types of experiences. So now, while, of course, hands-on experiences have been a little bit more challenging in higher education this year, we've still been able to provide those opportunities as we have been in person, both in the fall and in the spring. Um, and we are offering both students options of online and hybrid fashion if they did not want to attend in person. So lots of different options here at St. Louis University. We do have a lot of things for you to do also outside of the classroom. So we are actually the only Division I school in the city of St. Louis. We have 18 different Division I sports. We are in the Atlantic 10 Conference, and of course, we are the Billikens. Um, so the Billikens are a mythical creature, but a good luck charm, and it can't be one anywhere else. Um, so we have 18 different Division I sports, 30 club sports, and about 50 intramural programs. We also have over 150 student organizations for you to be involved in. Really and truly, anything that you're passionate about in high school, you can continue on in college. In addition, we have seven fraternities seven sororities and 10 multicultural fraternities. And I would say about 20% of our students do participate in Greek life. As I mentioned earlier, we do have our own campus in Madrid, Spain. Um, and so you can actually go there for all four years depending on your major. But we are a very incredibly um, friendly study abroad campus. Now there are many different ways to apply to St. Louis University. Um, and we, of course, would encourage you to do that. You can apply via the Common App or the SLU application. Both of them are absolutely free. We just require your application, essay, and official high school transcript. We are completely test optional this year. And so it is completely up to you if you want to apply test inclusive or test optional, whichever you would like. Your application for admission is also your application for scholarship, and we are awarding scholarship even if you apply test optional. So we would encourage you to look at our website to kind of determine whether or not you want to apply test optional or reach out to your admission counselor. We're your best advocate. Um, we do review students on a rolling basis and we start releasing decisions in November. We would encourage you to apply by December 1st as that's our priority decision for a majority of our competitive programs and some of our selective scholarships. Now our scholarships do range from about $8,000 to $25,000 per year. Last and certainly not, but not least, we would encourage you to visit St. Louis University. You can check out both our virtual or in-person options um, at slu.edu backslash visit. You can also feel free to reach out to either Jennifer or I um, and find your counselor on our website. So thank you so much for joining and we look forward to answering any questions that you have. Thank you, Stephanie. You're and welcome. Now now that we've heard from all six schools, I'm going to invite our six panelists to join me um, and they're going to give an answer to a question for you guys before we finish up um, in the order in which you presented in 
And the question is, what is your favorite event or tradition on campus? So if everyone can just answer in 30 to 45 seconds um, before we finish up, that would be great. Hi, um, my name is Damian Robinson. I'm an admissions officer at Carleton. I'm going to be filling in for my colleague Winnie Lotto to answer this question. Um, so my favorite campus tradition, of course, would have to be um, our Friday flowers tradition. Um, it's this thing where we have this florist who comes to campus each and every Friday um, and you can go and you can buy flowers for um, your friends, for someone who may be more than a friend, right, regardless of what it is, and you have the ability to place it in their mailbox with a nice note. Um, so all of our mailboxes are kind of in our campus hub, in our campus center called Sales Hills, um, and they're all unlocked. And so you can go in and you can put as many flowers as you want to in anyone's mailbox. Um, and I think that's kind of, um, it kind of just shows the spirit of, of Carleton students and kind of that caring um, attitude that a lot of our students carry. Um, and so I would say that that is one of my favorite traditions. Um, we do have a lot more and I could talk a lot about them, but that is one that definitely stands out for me. At Rockhurst, um, at my absolute, or one of my favorite um, events is the free stuff fair. And that's normally uh, during the first week of when school starts and all the student clubs and organizations table out in the quad. So the center of campus and they give all sorts of free stuff. So it's not only good for the first years, but it's um, everyone looks forward to it, even staff and faculty, because you just get free stuff and you get to learn more about these student organizations. Um, one of my favorite events at Truman has to be Harvest Fest. So in the fall, um, we have a tradition on campus where we have bonfires on the quadding on campus and we'll bring out pumpkin carving materials so students can carve their own pumpkins. We also do s'mores and hot apple cider. So it's a really nice fall event. Um, fall in Northeastern Missouri is beautiful. So the leaves are all changing on campus and you really get to enjoy kind of the, the fall feelings as I like to call them. Great, and add, um, oh, sorry, go ahead, Blake. Oh, no, it's, it's okay. Um, so I, I would say my probably our favorite tradition here is, so we have a Griffin statue that we have at freshman orientation and at graduation. And we always tell students that um, if you rub his head for good luck, it will bring you good luck here at Missouri Western as, and also as you progress into your uh, future endeavors after college. And so that's kind of a big thing that we've always had students do. I know it's cornball-y from the rub a Griffin statue's head for good luck but it's just something that's always been here at Missouri West and things like that. Um, I would say you and I, to me, I'm a competitive person. So we have a bunch of traditions and we do a traditions challenge. So students can partake in the different challenge um, traditions. And then if they complete all of them uh, before graduation, they actually get a medal and then that they get to wear um, at graduation. So if you are competitive and you wanna get through all the traditions, traditions challenge is definitely one for you. I think uh, we went a little out of order. So yeah, I think I just have, okay, so my, I apologize. That's why I got confused. Um, so my favorite tradition at St. Louis University is that um, there's many different traditions that they do that I love, but my favorite is convocation. So as first year students, when you move in, um, that first um, weekend, they convene all of our faculty and administration, um, as well as all the first year students and their family are together. Um, and they welcome you as sons and daughters of St. Louis University, um, and then they send your family on their way. And it's a pretty powerful moment, um, and it's a pretty powerful um, experience. So that's one of my favorite um, moments, events at St. Louis University. Well, thank you all so much for sharing your favorite traditions, and it definitely makes me want to go back to school. So thank you, everyone, for joining us this evening. When you close out of this window, there'll be a link to a very quick four question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. Also, this was just one of many different sessions being hosted. So please be sure to sign up for additional sessions happening after this. 
In about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording, as well as all the other sessions at strivescan.com Illinois. Have a great night, everyone.